So this first page is kind of dumb, and I'll show you why. So we know electronegativity increases across, it decreases going down. We're reviewing electronegativity because if you remember the difference between an ionic and a covalent bond, do you remember the chart where there's like that continuum of ionic versus covalent? And the way you tell is by the differences. Is by their differences in their electronegativity. So what they've done on this page is kind of dumb. Do you have to know this? No. But I just wrote it in. When determining electronegativity, what's nonpolar? Well, less than 0.5 difference. All right? A polar covalence in the middle, an ionic is greater. You don't have to know that. You don't have to know that. And then down here. What's your definition of electronegativity? My definition? Yeah. Isn't it just a desire for an electron? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So using your knowledge of atomic structure and Coulomb's law, why is electronegativity across? Increase. Core charge does what? Increases. But shielding is constant. If the core charge increases, the shielding is constant, that core charge can pull in electrons more as you move across. Same reason that the atomic radius shrinks as you move across. So down here, I actually already gave you the numbers. And like I said, this is kind of stupid. But CaCl, that would be ionic. C to O would be polar covalent. And like I said, you'll never have to do this. Because would, they'd have to give you the whole periodic table of the electronegativities. Do you remember that in the book? There's a periodic table with all electronegativities. This is dumb. Oxygen and oxygen, you should know. That is a truly what? That's a truly covalent, right? That's truly covalent, because the electronegativities would be the exact same. That's a diatomic element. Your diatomic elements are your truly covalent elements. Yes? <coughs> I remember trying to like, when we were in this chapter, mm -hmm. we would like look at, uh, the, we would find electronegativities of different um, compounds and then we would test them. We're not gonna have to do that on the test. No, no, you're gonna have to do that. HO, polar covalent. The vast majority of compounds are polar covalent. Aluminum phosphide, polar covalent. And then sodium fluoride is going to be what? You know that's going to be ionic. All right? That's a classic ionic compound. How do you find the electronegativity? You would have to be given them. There's no way to find them. No, There's no way. calculation. In real life, though. By experiment. So it's an experimental thing. There's no way to find it. It has to be a chart. So anyways. That's that. This copied horribly, so sorry. Uh, what type of ion is formed? Wait a second. Wait a second. Do we have the same thing? Yeah. yeah. What type of ion is formed by metals? Cation. Which is positive. Non-metals is my anion, or A negative ion, which is negative. And what type of bond is formed between a metal and a non-metal? Ionic. Ionic. This makes Dis so much more sense now. I know. Like, the reason it makes more sense. Do you want to know the number one reason it makes more sense? Your brain is more developed. You're laughing at me, Casey? No, bro, like eight, eight months ago? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Your brain has developed that much more. You've had amazing teaching. <laughs> um, no, but like, brain development is huge. It really is huge, and like, your brain's not fully developed till what, 22? Something like that, I don't think your brain fully develops till 22. Um, anyways, ionic, how would you describe an ionic bond? Bonding through? Transfer of electrons. Transfer of electrons. Covalent's gonna be? Sharing is covalent, right? Sharing of electrons. Sharing is caring, sharing is covalent, that's not what I'm saying, okay? Um, 
And then metallic, how would you describe that? Metal giving so. one, though. Just oh. uh, what are you doing back there, Sammy? The sea of electrons. Yes, the sea of electrons. All right? This is delocalized electrons, right? Moving across metals, something like that. But you have a sea of electrons and a metallic bond. And they're moving across. Remember the guy holding the the balls, the Vsauce we watched? Yeah. They're like moving. Anyways. How do you draw an ionic bond? I draw something positive. I would draw something negative, right? Yep. And show an electron moving to the negative, something like that. How do you draw a covalent bond? I would draw something like this. I'm sharing an electron. In a metallic bond, I'm going to have something like this, and then my electrons are kind of moving through all around. So my electrons are flowing all around for a metallic bond. How does the delocalized area contribute to the properties demonstrated by metals? Well, if the electrons are delocalized, I have a flow of electrons, so therefore it is conductor. conductor. So flow of electrons equals conductive. Oh boy, oh boy, conductive. And what about malleability and ductileness? Yes. Ductility. Why does this prove that they're malleable? They're malleable because what? Why? There's no, there's no actual bond. Yeah. They're malleable because the nuclei, all right, can move without bonds breaking. So the nuclei can move. That remember the did I show you the no that's freshman. There's a movie where they're making like bells, and they hit the bell, and it shows how it just it, it kind of moves. Do you remember that? Um, the nuclei don't break. If the nuclei break, if the bonds break, it's brittle. It's brittle. So that's just why it's malleable. Put the page. Ductility. Ductility is the same thing as malleability. Ductility just means you can draw it into a string. So malleability is bend, ductile is into a wire. Same thing. Yeah, you got it. Ah, then we had these things. Do you guys remember bond length? Yeah. All right? So label the following on the graph. Yes, but I never understood it. All right? You'll understand it now, hopefully. Maybe not. Where two atoms are too close, too far, or at an optimal distance. Do you guys remember where the optimal distance is? Where? The part on the line. The dippy. Yeah, part on the dippy. The optimal distance is where the attractive and repulsive forces are kind of balanced. All right? And then this distance right here gives me my what? What did this distance give me? My bond length. And then this energy is going to give me my bond energy. So the bond length is here. Over here, they're going to be what? Too far. Too far. So these two are too far. There's not enough attraction. Here, it's the perfect amount of attraction and repulsion. It's kind of give and take. And then up here, they're way too close. They want to start repelling. They want to start pushing back away. That's too close. This is all about your bond lengths. So over here, label the following locations on the graph. Try these. Atoms repel each other. Atoms not attracted, bond length. I think I just gave you the answers on that, so, but that's okay. Um, are these graphs for any uh, molecule? Yeah, this is how you get the bond length of any two things bonding together. Yeah, I literally just gave you the answers, right? I'm gonna repel up here. I have bond length down here. It's the first time I've done this, so I'm just kind of doing it out of my head. And then I have no attraction up here. No attraction. Okay. 
bond length, and bond strength. How did I teach you this? The shorter the length. The the yes. Let's go. You got it. So bond length single is going to be my longest length, which is going to be my weakest strength. Middle. Mid. <laughs> I'm so cool. All right. Shortest. Strongest. Mid. The shorter the length, the stronger the strength. I like that. That's a good one. It should, but after break, we need to like get those ordered. Oh, did you put a, a thing on there? Okay. All right, here we go. The graph of the right shows the potential energy and distance between imaginary molecules A, B, A2, B2, and C2. Which molecule has atoms that are closest to each other? What would you say? A2. Which molecule has the greatest potential Wait, energy? Wait, what? Why? Why? Because my inner my distance is the lowest. Oh, sure. Which molecule has the greatest potential energy in its bond? C. This is just reading the graph. C two. Okay. What? My greatest potential energy. Remember, my energy. Sorry, my energy. There's. It's really negative potential energy. So we've got positive and negative, so I'll get negative 100, negative 200, negative 300, negative 400, because we're talking about attraction and repulsion. So the farther, this would be like my axis, right? So the farther above or below is going to be the greatest energy. Now, which molecule requires the most energy in order to break the bond? Don't overthink this. It's also C2. If C2 has the greatest potential energy in its bond, it's going to require the most energy to break it. So don't overthink that. Don't overthink that. One of these molecules has a single bond, one double, one triple. Which one most likely has the double bond? Yeah, B2. B2. This next part, cross this out. Okay? This is talking about atomic core. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> there is no such thing as atomic core. There's, a, there's core charge. There's atomic radius. I even put it in my AP Chem Facebook group. They're like, I don't even know what that is. So whoever made this, I'm not sure what they were thinking. Maybe they were British. I don't know. I don't know why I said British, but it feels like a British thing. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Draw a particle diagram for the ionic solid LIF. So I'm going to have big, small, big, small, small, big, small, big, big, small, big, something like that. What's this called? Wait, what's after the big one? What is this called? What did I just make? A crystal lattice. Which ones are the big ones? Is it L, I, or F? Oh. I've got F minus, minus, F minus, F minus, F minus. Here's my Na plus. You guys remember playing with this? Oh. The block, right? The green and blue balls, the magnets. I passed that around. Hold on, is this backwards? Yeah. It's supposed to be L. Oh, it's an L I F. Oh, yeah. Lithium. Yeah, and fluorine. Lithium fluorine is, is smaller. Oh. Yeah. I would do that wrong. Oh. Yeah. Is it, it 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 therefore, to become larger? Yeah. Lithium. Fluorine is smaller. Yeah, but it just. So, electronegativity. The cells, but fluorine has six more protons forming the radius to be smaller. Right. Yeah. Lithium is smaller. We drew it backwards. Electrons don't really No, wait. No. You drew it the right way. Yeah, it's an Lithium is, is, as I go across the table, uh -huh. what happens to atomic gets, radius? It gets, it gets smaller. Right. Because I have, so fluorine has many, many more uh -huh. 
protons pulling those electrons in. So F is yeah. smaller. Right? So F is smaller. So it is backwards. F is smaller. So I drew this backwards. That's unfortunate. Big, small, big, small, <laughs> small, big, small, big, big, small, big, small. So. It's the same Yeah, what's big? Lithium. Lithium. Please. Li plus. Li plus. I also drew the wrong letters too. Li plus. Li plus. Na. Na. You have a hard time telling which one was the big one there. Wait a second. Hold on. Let's just make sure here. You know what? I could just leave and like pause the Well, we're not, we're gonna get this right before you leave. Li has a greater atomic radius when compared to F. Boom, mic drop. Thank you. Thank God. Yep. It's just that easy. But the thing is, there's no thing. There's no thing. <laughs> there's no thing. <laughs> anions have a longer ionic radius. I, I think we're thinking about when they're ionic. So, we're thinking about this when they're atoms. Right? We have to think about this when they're ions. When they're ions, what does lithium do with one electron? It loses it, which is going to make lithium actually smaller. It says that in the valve going out. Okay, but is it going to yeah. make it better? Yes, it is. Because you're losing a whole shell. So if you're going to draw this right, I was right. Big, small, big, small, small, big, small, big, big, small, big, small. My big thing has to be fluorine. I was right. You guys stop confusing me. Wait. No. Fluorine is gaining an electron, right? Right. If fluorine gains an electron, what does that do with all the other electrons? What do they want to do to each other? They want to repel. Right? So you basically have neon and helium. That's a huge difference. The atom does, but not the ion. We're talking about ions. We're talking about the ions. So think about this in terms of ions. So F is the one gaining. Correct. Okay. Yes. So I was right the first time. Then you guys confused me. Uh, you still so F is the bigger one. Yes. <laughs> I still did right. This is the right one. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you guys get it. All right. It's wait, not wait, that. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, F is bigger. Right? L is smaller. Yeah, we should have just done positive, negative, negative, positive, <laughs> negative, oh positive. You guys get it. We yes. Get small. Okay, so it, considering your first diagram that was messed up, though. That was right, okay. actually, except for Na instead of F. Right, so if it was Na, then wouldn't they both have the same radii? No, because if it was, oh, if it was Na? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, okay. but cool. it's not. Thank you. <laughs> Briefly explain why particles are arranged the way they are in the structure. Why, how do they want to arrange? What do they want to minimize? Particles want to minimize repulsive forces. And what do they want to maximize? They want to maximize attractive forces. That's it. They want to minimize repulsive forces and maximize attractive forces. Are they announcing for the band to leave? Yeah, some. Okay. I heard that there were parents literally bringing in luggage of people who forgot forgot it this morning. <laughs> also, are you gonna be wearing the same clothes for like thirty six hours? No. No. What are you gonna change? I put clothes in my carry on. That's smart. Wait, are you flying? No, no. But they'll have like a backpack on the bus and then like. I mean, I guess some people think that it's, yeah. 
That's a very different answer than my freshman. <laughs> Were they yeah. Freshmen? <laughs> well, you gonna be wearing the same clothes for 36 hours? They're like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's what I would do. Next page. Ah, interstitial. When you hear the word interstitial, do you guys remember? Well, first of all, does anybody, anybody know an example? I got this question wrong. Interstitial alloy would be steel. This would be steel, all right? This is where carbon, right? Carbon will be the smaller, and iron would be the larger. So this one looks something like this. Here's my big. So it looks like this. Here's an interstitial alloy. I've got all the bigs, right? And the smalls are kind of in between. So I have two different sizes in an interstitial alloy. On a substitutional alloy, I can substitute. So this is your brass and bronze. So brass and bronze, um, these are your alloys. So that looks like, like here's a brass, one size, here's a bronze. They're all the same size. They're all the same size for substitutional because you can substitute the sizes. So interstitial, different sizes. Substitutional, same size. It doesn't matter the order. The order. For the order is not actually. It, it's it's an alloy, so it's not going to be perfect. It could be some mix. This is probably a multiple choice question. Probably a multiple choice question. What would it be? What are we doing? Next week sometime? Well, not during break, but <laughs> the week yeah, after next, probably. Next week. Okay. First thing Monday after break now. Oh, that's not what we need to do. I'm not going to do that. All right. We're not going to do all of these parts. Um, total electrons, I don't know why we need that. So we're going to skip that. That's kind of dumb. All I really care about is valence electrons for CO2. So carbon dioxide is CO2. How many valence electrons would be in that molecule? 16 million is the That was fast, but yes. 16. Now we're going to draw the formula. Guess what we're about to review on the next page? Formal charge. It's coming. All right? We're going to review, form review formal charge in a second. So carbon. Boom. Oxygen. Oxygen. If I just put 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, bond. 20, that's not going to work. So I have to have double bond, double bond, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now you can answer how many shared pairs? There's four shared pairs. How many lone pairs? Four lone pairs. If you want to do total, you can, but that's not important. I don't know why you'd have to write that. NH4 plus. Total valence electrons. Five plus four is nine, but a positive one is eight. So eight, what's this gonna look like? N, H, 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 H. Don't forget. As a charge, put a bracket around it. I'm going to put a bracket around it. Sulfur trioxide, total valence electrons, is 24. How's this going to look? What's the formula for Oh, sorry. Sulfur trioxide. SO3. Yeah. SO3. How am I going to make this 24 and satisfy the octet rule? If I just do single, oh, single, single, is that going to work? No. Why not? Because it doesn't satisfy sulfur. Because sulfur would only have six. Do you remember the exceptions to the octet rule? Yes. So what's this going to look like? Let's draw our original. 
I need 24, right? You do a resonance, right? If I only put a double bond here, right? Put a double bond here. It's going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. That would work, right? But this is going to be what? Resonance. Does it matter where the double bond goes? It doesn't matter where the double bond goes. So you have to show resonance if there's resonance available. What are, what are the exceptions to the octet? Because you said BS, but then it wasn't Stay with me. It's on the next page. <laughs> PCL5. Wait, Balance so electrons. When you're doing the resonance, because you also draw the, long, the full lone pairs on all of them? Or actually I mean, you would take off a lone pair on one of them? It, there's a couple ways you can do that. I would just leave the lone pair off of one of them. Okay. Or you could actually draw out the three. If you want to just draw out the three different ones, they accept that too. So draw out the triple bond here, here, and here. That's fine. PCL5, balance electrons is 40. This one's an easy one. P, CL, 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 CL. CL. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There it is. 40. 8 times 5 is 40. Good? Next page. So here it is. What is the octet rule? The 8 rule. Yeah. Elements want eight electrons. They want a full outer shell, full outer shell. When drawing Lewis structures, what should be done with the leftover electrons when the octet rule is satisfied? Where do they go? What do they go as, first of all? They go as lone pairs. Where? On what? The central atom. They usually go as lone pairs on the middle Thing. It goes lone pairs on the central atom. Draw the Lewis structure for NO2. This is a weird one. NO2 has how many total balance electrons? 17. So here's N, here's O, here's O. This is funky. I'm going to have to have a double bond, right? Oh, yeah. So here, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. How many do I need total? 17. Seventeen. Seventeen. This is a charge then, right? That's no. how you would really draw that. No. Would this exist? No. What's it actually going to be? It's actually going to be NO2 plus plus one. Right? In nature, it would be NO2 plus 1. You would lose that electron, right? Or no, it would be NO2 minus 1, actually. It would want to gain an electron to give N that full octet. So is it possible to have that? Sure, before it bonds, but most likely not. Yes? Even though it's only like half the one pair, but still SP2, three bonds there. One, two, three, SP2. SP2. Is there resonance here? No. Yeah, there, there technically is, right? Yeah. Couldn't the double bond go on either one? Yeah. Why couldn't it go on this side? It could. Why couldn't I draw the double bond on this side and just swip, flip that lone pair over there? I could, right? So watch out for that. Do I think they're going to have you be drawing out resonance structures? No. Just be aware. Be prepared. There are elements that disobey this rule. Here it is. Give an example of an element that can have more than the octet rule. Do you guys remember? The exceptions to the octet rule are BS. Remember? BS. So carbon to silicon always have eight. Phosphorus above. Have you ever heard that before? I made this up myself. Right? Phosphorus 
Well, really, I guess phosphorus slash sulfur and above can have more than eight. And then boron and below can have less. Or you could literally just think about it as period three is where it starts. You can have an expanded octet. You could do it like that too. Really, aluminum silicon, silicon are going to have four, but you'll know. It's not nothing you have to memorize, you'll know. Give an example of an element that requires fewer than the octet rule. I just gave all of that. So, lithium or beryllium or boron. What is the equation for determining formal charge on a particle? There's two equations. Equation one, this is the one I taught you. Formal charge equals valence electrons from the periodic table minus parentheses lone electrons, right? So lone electrons plus that's a either one, same thing. Lone electrons plus bonding divided by two. And I'll give you an example of this. That's how I taught you. Or it could just be total valence electrons minus the assigned. So there's two different ways to do that. So valence electrons minus their lone electrons on it plus the bonding divided by two, or valence electrons under the table minus how many are actually assigned. Those are the two ways. John? Is this for um, each atom in a formula? Each yeah, individual it's... atom in a formula. What is an assigned? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. So how many does it actually have? We talked about that a little bit yesterday with the Lewis dot structures. Draw the Lewis structure of carbonate. Include all valid resonance structures. Label formal charges on the structures. So let's draw carbonate down here. Oh wait, is there a spot on the next page? Ah, there is. I'll do it on this page. So CO3, we know that this is CO3 two minus, right? Sure. So, how many valence electrons do I have total? 24. 24 valence electrons. So, I'm going to have carbon, oxygen, 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 carbon, oxygen, 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 carbon, oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. They asked me to draw all of them. And these are all two minus, two minus, two minus, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Pause while you're finishing this up for commercial break by the real Sam Smith. He has a book he wants to show you. Oh. I do? Yeah. Don't you have a book? Oh. <laughs> Did you find a book? Wait, which one's the book? So, Sam showed me this book this morning. And what do you want to tell people about this book, Sam? It's really good. It's really good. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's not what he told me. What? He told me that it was really helpful. And he got this book for physics? Oh, no, you said, didn't you get the same book for physics? No. What? I said I got it in the beginning of the year, like before. Well, you said it helped you get a four on something. Or no, I was talking about the videos. I was oh, like, got it. That's Anyways, <laughs> this book's pretty good. He showed me. Um, it's another way, just another study tool. And he said it could be yours for the low price of $20. Oh. Um, so <laughs> another option. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it's you literally exactly what we're yeah. talking about here. And there's, it's colorful. So another study option, Fast Track Chemistry by the Princeton Review. It's a preview for AP Honors and Other Advanced Study Chemistry. $20 could be yours. Thanks, so Sam. How many Give videos? Sam a round of applause for sharing that. And I also posted the book I, I recommend, too. So. I thought they were announcing it. All right, so. Let's do this molecule, all right? Let's label this oxygen one, oxygen two, 
oxygen three. Yeah. All right, let's calculate the formal charge for carbon first. So for carbon, if you go back to your equation, it is valence electrons. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. So it would be four minus the lone, does carbon have any lone pairs? No. Zero. Plus bonding electrons. How many electrons does carbon have bonded to it? Two, four, six, eight, right? Eight divided by two. So four minus four is zero. Or you could do valence electrons minus assigned. How many valence electrons does carbon have? Four. How many are actually assigned to it, though? There's only actually four assigned to it, right? Because it's really only sharing one electron from each of those. So I've got one, two, three, four. Four minus four is also zero. So that's the assigned. Actually, that's a little bit easier. However you want to do it. Oxygen one. Let's do it the other way. How many valence electrons does oxygen have? Six. Six. Minus assigned. How many electrons are assigned to it? Two, four, six, plus one is seven, so that's negative one. Or we can do it this way. We get the same answer. Oxygen two. How many valence electrons does oxygen have? Six. How many are assigned to it? Seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's sharing one here, right? Minus seven is? Negative one. Oxygen three. How many bounce electrons? Six. Six minus how many are assigned? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six minus six is? That's formal charge. Are any one of these any better than the other? Yeah. No, no. These would all be the same. You're just moving the double bond, hence resonance. Right? But sulfate does not work like that. Okay? So sulfate, SO4, 2 minus. How many total valence electrons? 26. No. 32. 32. 32 valence electrons. Uh, Let's draw it this way first. One, two, three, just like that. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 Are you sure there's an announcement coming? I don't want you to be late. It's like uh, a one that we have to be there. I don't know. Mr. French sent an email out earlier. He said, please dismiss these at 12.45. So, would this work? Would this satisfy the actet rule? Yeah. Yeah. What would the formal charge be on sulfur? Two. It would be, how many valence electrons does it have? Six. How many are assigned? Four. Two. So that would be two. Oxygen is all going to be what? Zero. Oh, negative one. Negative one. They're all going to be negative one, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got two for sulfur. Oxygens are all negative one. Could I draw this a different way? Yeah. Yes. No. Could I draw like this? Could I use a double bond on one of these? Mm -hmm. Can I draw it like that? Why would you? <laughs> Why would you? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Because we want our formal charges on the individual atoms to all be zero if possible. Right? Wait, you want your formal charges on what? You want all the individual formal charges to be zero if possible. So, formal charge here is still minus one. Minus one, minus one. What's this one going to be? Zero. For oxygen? For this one. The valence electrons it has is six. How many are assigned? One, two, three, four, five, six. That is zero. Six minus six is zero. Agreed? What's this sulfur now? Negative one. The valence electron sulfur has? 
Six. Six. One. One. How many are assigned? Five. Five. So that is positive one. So I've got some positive ones, I've got some negative ones, I've got some zeros. So could I draw this another way? Oh my god. No. You could. No, you can't. No, you can double that. bond, double bond. You cannot. Oh my could I draw it like that? I could. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is a really good example of formal charge. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Formal charge in this oxygen. Six minus one, two, four, six, seven is negative one. Negative one. This one's also going to be negative, negative one. one. What's this sulfur going to be? Zero. Zero. What's this oxygen going to be? Zero. Zero. What's this oxygen going to be? Zero. So I have zero, 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 minus one, minus one. It's this one. Has the most zeros. Wait, That's you, formal charge. Can you just do another double bond? No, it no, won't work. No, no it won't. Then will not work. Right. Screwed up on the board. Will not work. That's formal charge. So if you're asked to draw as a board for one, is that the only right one? Yeah. That's the correct one. It's the correct one. Really? I don't think you're going to be asked to do that, though. I really don't. That takes way too much time. No. <laughs> what information? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we'll take it for a five minute break at 1245. <laughs> what information is given? Ah, bond order. This is something you should have learned in CP chem. I don't know if you did. Let's, this is really simple. Okay? Really simple. This is just the number of bonds between atoms. This is so easy. All right? The equation VO equals number of bonds, right? Divided by number of domains. That's it. How many bonds are there in how many domains? The domains are just your bonding sites. Right? So how many bonding sites, how many domains? Um, and then all you have to know is as the bond order increases, the bond strength is also going to increase. Think about that, right? The more bonds I have per domain, I'm starting double and triple bonds, right? The shorter the strength, the stronger the strength. This is just another way to talk about double and triple bonds. The shorter the length, the stronger the strength. I need a five minute break too. The stronger the strength. <laughs> no. <laughs> so here we go. For acetaminophen. Acetaminophen. Which is the active ingredient in? Tylenol. Tylenol. Not Advil. Is it the same thing? One of them and said, and the other one is not. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Anyways. Aspirin and said acetaminophen is not. Here's the molecule. So let's identify the hybridization of the carbon involved in the double bond on the left side of the structure. So first of all, this is an organic molecule. Which carbon am I talking about? I got to be talking about this carbon. This is a stick structure. So how many things do I have coming off that? One, two, three things coming off of that. SP2. P2, bada boom, bada bing. What is the bond order for the nitrogen atom? Nitrogen has how many domains? One, two, three, agreed. Divided by how many, what? Where are you seeing domains? Nitrogen has three possible places it can bond. One, two, three. How many things are connected? One, two, three. Three divided by three is one. Wait, that's bond order. That's it. So all you're looking at is, for domains, you're seeing how many things are connected to it and how many spots. And then for your actual, I'm sorry, it's bonds, right? So how many bonds? It has one, two, three bonds over one, two, three domains. I'm just counting. So if there's a double bond, it would be four over three? Yeah. Yes. Okay. John? Do the lone pairs not count as domains? The lone pairs? Um, yeah. There would be no lone pairs on that. So would they count if it has some? It would not matter because no. I don't. 
Because it's about bonds. Bond order is about actual bonds. What's the Vesper shape of this nitrogen molecule? What's the shape? Yes. Trigonal. Trigonal what? Trigonal pyramidal. We're finishing this page. Actually, that's good. Band, band people leave. We'll take a five minute break. Band people have a great break. I will finish this. Here we go. Using Vesper. Why does a molecule have this shape? Why is it trigonal pyramidal? What do the electrons at the top here do? Push them in. Yeah, we know that electrons repel, right? Oh, yeah. The electrons, parentheses, the lone pair, right? Pushes others down. You go from this to this. A very accurate description. You're going from this to this. It's a very calm class. <laughs> is it that much different without? Yeah, it is. Just a different dynamic. Wait, did John just say this? That's my stuff. I was wondering if John. I was wondering if he did. I'm like, I could see him doing that. <laughs> but all right, let's finish this up. What is the bond angle of C double bonded O? So we have to go back here. That's one of the ones, but not this one. We're talking about. We're talking about. We're here now. All right. There's three. 120. Let's go. 120 degrees. Explain. Explain. We know because we know they want to stay apart from each other. I'm putting we know. We know, yes. A uh, single bond. How many sigma bonds would that have? One, one, one. They're all one. A double bond would have how many sigma bonds? One. A triple bond would have one. one. How many pi bonds for a single? Zero. How many pi bonds for a double? One. How many pi bonds for a triple? Two. Why do you do words? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. My brain just decided to do that. We need to finish this. <laughs> You know, oh, there's no back. Do you remember how hard this was when we learned that originally? <laughs> Single bond, sigma bond, double bond, sigma pi, triple bond, sigma pi pi. Okay. Circle one sigma and one pi bond. Can you just like circle one of the double bonds and just say that's sigma? There's a pi, but there's also a sigma. Right? As long as you don't circle a single bond and label that as a pi, you're good. How many total sigma bonds? Ooh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Oh, but then you also have to consider. There's hydrogens coming off of here too, right? Oh. There'd be one here. Oh. There would be one. Let's see. Here. There'd be one here. 15, 16, 17. 17. Wait, there's 17. Yeah, because it's not showing it, but there's actually hydrogens coming off of there. We'll talk later. <laughs> We're just counting. We're counting single, single bonds. That's it. I counted 17. Is the N to the H also a single bond? That's a single? Yeah. Wait, can you dot the yeah, bonds? Can I what? Can you like point to the single bond? This one doesn't have. It's, it's, I'm going to go right to left this time. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I got 17. Listen. Okay. Double bonds is just one, two? Double bonds are just one. Because we're just doing sigma bonds. So is it just the number of like lines, literally? Not all the lines, because this is only a double bond is only one. But there's technically a hydrogen here, there's a hydrogen here, and a hydrogen here. So it'd be 17. How many pi bonds? One, two, three, four, five, six. 
Done. Oh. Unit two. We've now technically gone over three of the nine. I'm not going to go over unit nine again. We just did that. Your homework over. Yeah, that's seven. No homework. No homework over what? So no. 